Good morning. We want to welcome you to the Annadale Baptist Church, where Jesus Christ is Lord and you are important. And at this moment, I'm going to invite you to stand and join with me, please. The psalm writer writes in Psalm 63, 1 through 4, listen to these amazing words from the psalmist. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. Come on, church. Together, let's worship our Lord today. Sing with us.
so grateful, Lord, that you have brought us here once again to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That's an, that's an everyday thing, Lord God. And we thank you that we could come and celebrate in your presence today because Jesus is alive. He lives and he reigns forevermore. And Jesus, we honor your great and your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord, for this time together once again as we offer these songs to you with all of our love and our gratitude, Lord God, thanking you for the life that you have given us through your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. There we go. Can you hear me now? You know, week after week, I am so blessed by little Elliot that comes down here on his own in the front row singing and shouting praises to God. And I don't think anybody tells him to sit here. I think he just does this on his own. And look, he's already being an influence. He's got a little buddy over there helping him. So uh, what an example to us all. You know, I know there's a lot of parents that have to prod their kids to stand up and sing and so on. But he's just right there in the middle of it. So watch how you treat this guy. He may be a future pastor at Andale one day. So, hey, we've got a good Friday service coming up. Resurrection Sunday is on April 9th. And before that, you know, is Good Friday. Jesus died on the cross on Good Friday. Three days later, he arose. You say, but wait a minute, that's two days. No, in the Hebrew calendar, they counted all three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's three days. And Jesus rose from the dead. Praise God, we come together and worship Amen. our risen yeah. Savior. <clears throat> before that, we honor he who died on the cross and took our sins. And we're going to have a special service for that. We invite you to come out at 7 o'clock on April 7th and participate in a Good Friday service. You know, COVID really beat us up pretty bad years ago. I mean, it, it was the result of, you know, I mean, things closed and all kinds of restrictions were put in place. And we had ushers telling you where to sit. Remember that? And one of the things that got suspended was passing around the offering plate. Well, guess what? That's coming back starting next week. Amen. Amen. So I'm looking forward to passing around that offering again. So next week, we're going to pick that up. Uh, it's still Annie Armstrong. We're still, we're going to be doing that through the end of the month. Remember, it supports domestic missionaries all over the United States. And so every money that you put in the plate, we've got special envelopes for that. It goes right for those missionaries who are doing God's work right here in our own country. I want to remind you of the Wednesday night services. Um, I am resuming teaching on the book of Daniel on Wednesday nights. And uh, next week we're looking at Daniel in the lion's den. And so I certainly invite you to come out for that. We've got Spanish service, youth, children, all ages. So praise God. Let's just continue to unite in our worship and our singing and in our giving thanks to our great God.
this time. Well, it's great to be here this morning, and thank you, Brother Joe and the praise team for uh, preparing us, always preparing us to hear the Word of God, right? Uh, they sing those praises because the Lord is worthy, and uh, now um, we're going to share the Word of God. But I wanted to thank you, thank everyone for their prayers, and, uh, and we'll be praying right now for the children and the youth, and uh, thank you again for all your prayers, all your gifts, um, uh, cards. You know, I've been uh, blessed, blessed. And so let's go in to the Lord in prayer. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here this morning to worship you, Lord, corporately, because it's important to you that the church get together every week, Lord, uh, to be present, to be in person, and we, we thank you also for those that have opportunity to hear us through online as well, Father. And now we pray, Lord, for our children. Lord, we continue praying for them, Father. They're, they're, you, you love them. Let the children come and be me, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And uh, you take children and youth very seriously, Father. Help us to support them. Help us to pray for them daily. And, Lord, we pray that you would uh, put your shield around them, Lord. You would protect them, Lord, from the attacks of Satan, the world, and uh, we now pray, Lord, that you would bless the rest of this service, for we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, yes, it's a, it's a blessing, and I also want to thank Pastor Osvaldo for uh, stepping in, you know. Um, uh, I've had other uh, pastors work with me, either I uh, couldn't take them or they couldn't take me, right, but, but I just thank the Lord that... Uh, uh, with Brother Osvaldo, uh, Pastor Osvaldo, it's uh, just been a beautiful, I think, relationship, and I appreciate him also. So thank you, Brother, for always uh, being there, being ready. And uh, now we're going to go to our uh, message this morning. If you have an outline there, uh, we're going to look at uh, what the Lord has for us this morning. And uh, I'm not at 100%, so bear with me. Okay, bear with me this morning. And, and uh, we're going to start here with, uh, uh, you know, we want to look and, and dig into these uh, verses here in Proverbs 18, verses 10 and 11. A beautiful Proverbs written by the, one of the wisest men, if not the wisest man that ever lived, which was uh, Solomon. And uh, right here, you know, this is godly inspired, godly divine. Remember that all the Proverbs originally come from who? From God. Okay, these are not man-made here. These are from God and his throne. But through Solomon, he shares these words to us here in chapter 18 of Proverbs. And he says here in verses 10 and 11, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. And a rich man's wealth is this strong city. And like a high wall... In his own imagination, in his own imagination. So we're just going to look at two points this morning. We're going to look at the false strong towers. The false strong towers uh, that the world presents. And sometimes as Christians, we follow those uh, strong towers. But we shouldn't. We should always run and seek help and security and strength uh, from what? The true strong tower, which we will see is Jesus himself. So two points there, the false uh, the strong tower and also the true uh, strong tower. All right, so I also want to thank Brother Omar back in the the operating room back here in the sound booth and the audio and everything. Uh, let's give him a hand, actually, you know. He's, uh, but because uh, he, uh, people give me credit for the outlines, how they come up right, you know, back here. But uh, he's actually the one that puts them together, right? Uh, I give him the outline, but he puts it all together, makes it look really, really nice. So, uh, brother, I've 
been complimented by people, but you're the one that deserves that credit there. Uh, real quick here, um, you know, first of all, uh, what happened? Anybody remember what happened on December 7th of 1941? Any historians here? Any, any yes, Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor uh, was attacked by the Japanese and uh, nobody expected it to happen. Nobody expected it. Actually, one uh, journalist by the name of Clark Beach said a Japanese attack on Hawaii is regarded as the most unlikely thing in the world with one chance in a million of being successful. You know, why? Because he, yes, the, the American, uh, American might, American um, uh, battleships that were stationed there um, and, and, and Hawaii that were protected by distance. You know, it's not like some wars that right, right next door, you know, like France and England. And, all. Yeah, and so said, uh, w one chance in a million that the Japanese will attack. This was on September 6th, 1941, when he wrote that. But some months later on, on December 7th, Pearl Harbor was attacked. And there was a lot of devastation, a lot of destructions, a lot of battleships were destroyed. A lot of, I, I went over the list uh, on my own at home and I go, wow, I, you know, I never saw the, the destruction, devastation of that attack. And I'm using these examples to show you that uh, these are man structures, man-made things that uh, also can be destroyed. You know, and then what happened on 9-11, 2001? Anybody remember? You know, 2001, 9-11. You remember the Twin Towers, you know, said to be, to symbolize what? The greatness of America in architecture, in uh, economically, in uh, construction. You know, it, it symbolized what? That America is number one. And what happened on 9-11? Well, uh, the towers came down. The towers came down uh, in a matter of uh, minutes and, you know, what took 10 years from to build the Twin Towers in, in New York, in a matter of uh, minutes, those uh, 102 minutes, actually, 102 minutes to come down, to come down. So 10 years to build and in 102 minutes to come down. And I'm saying this because I'm giving you some examples. And then what happened this last week? Anybody remember in Mississippi? You know, they had a what? Tornado. You know, 26 plus people died. Um, devastation, 170 miles. The tornado wiped out, cleaned out. What houses, homes, people were what? Going on with their lives and all of a sudden, what happened? Their lives were turned upside down. Their lives were turned upside down. And so, I'm sharing with you that if we put our trust on false towers, on false uh, strong towers, we're also going to be disappointed. We're going to be uh, let down. And as believers, there's only one tower that we should always go to. One tower that we should always go to. And that's Jesus Christ himself. So let's begin with the false uh, towers here. You know, the false towers that uh, people have. You know, it could be our finances. Some people have their security. Oh, I feel protected and secure because I got a 401k. I'm good. When I retire, I'm going to be, you know, in good hands. Not with all state, but, well, that's what the, the saying goes, right? But some, you understand? So this is a false tower that the world, the persons that don't know Christ, that's where their hope is on. And I don't know, you know, I keep hearing that there's uh, something's coming up the road here in 2023, a uh, financial meltdown, uh, I don't know what. 
I keep hearing this, that before the year is out, that something's going to happen financially. So they're telling you to go buy gold, go buy silver. And I'm not against these things. You know, the Lord allows us to make wise decisions, wise investments. Uh, I have an annuity. You have an annuity. And those, you know, go to investments uh, so that your annuity would be built. And at the time of retirement, you have some money there for you in your later years. But um, uh, that's a, a dangerous, false uh, tower that we should be careful of. Remember, the Bible says don't, you, a man cannot serve, or a Christian cannot serve two, to have two masters. You know, it's either God or, me, or money. Which of the two are you uh, bowing down to? I bow down to the Lord. I bow down to the Lord. And so what are the false, what are the false towers to people? How about consumerism, you know? Consumerism. Uh, and sometimes people treat the church like consumers. Hey, go to this church. You know, they have the best youth group. They have the best uh, praise team. They have the best orator or speaker. Um, and I remember one pastor of a big church here in Fresno telling me, Oscar, don't forget that it's, it's how, you, it, you know, it's about being a good communicator. But I, I wanted to tell him, okay, you got the numbers and everything, but what communicating what? The Word of God, right? I want to make sure that I am communicating the Word of God, not just that I'm a great speaker and great orator. I don't want to get the glory. I want God to get the glory, and I want to be communicating the truth of God's Word. That's what I believe. But some of us, you know, and some people also have their, their, their tower of what, of humanism. You know what humanism means? It means that man will figure everything out. That man knows how to take care of every problem that is in uh, the world. We made it to the moon. We made it, you know, now we're wanting to go to Mars and other, and, and you know, yes, praise the Lord that God gave man ability, wisdom, intellect, and everything else, but I'm not going to put my faith in man to uh, rescue me and to figure it out. No, God is at the center of my life, not man. God is, man is not at the center of my life. It's God. And I could go on and on. There's other uh, human reasoning. I always encounter some people that tell me, you know, um, I can figure everything out. I, uh, you know, I... Uh, I, I don't. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to see Christ. I don't. I go. Then what are you? What are you guided by in this world, in this life? What What is your authority? What is it that helps you make it through this life? For me, it's the Word of God. Amen. This book right here, you know, from the beginning to the end. This book is my guide. This book is my light. I'm guided. I'm directed. I make decisions based on this book right here. What is your authority in your life? What is your gut? Well, how about my reasoning? <laughs> no, I wouldn't even uh, know because it's a fallen reason. Uh, you are under the curse of sin. Our human nature is depraved. You know, our, our human, our sinful nature, you know, which is in us already. People say, well, I didn't commit sin this week. I go, you you already have it within you. That's what Jesus has to take care of, your human sinfulness. And he does that when he comes into your heart. He takes care of that. And he gives you a righteousness that you are uh, dressed in his righteousness. So these are false, uh, uh, you know, towers that people are depending on. And... Are we living in the last days? Are we living in the last days? Actually, the last days, remember this, you know, uh, the last days are from the first coming of Christ to the second coming of Christ. Well, Christ came 2,000 years ago. Yes, and the second coming, we don't know the day or the time. But if we're raptured, the Lord comes for us, we're going to get us out of here before all, you know, of the terrible things come to this world, he'll rapture the church, take us to be with him, and avoid all those uh, calamities and 
and things that uh, the Bible describes. Um, and, uh, but anyway, so this, this is what we, you could read in 2 Timothy 3. Uh, you'll, you'll read here that, uh, you know, there in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, there you could read about that in, in those verses. Right here, 2 Timothy uh, 3, 1 to 5. Look what it says. But realize this, in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness, though they have denied its power. Avoid such men as these. Wow, it almost sounds like uh, that's what's happening right now. And so, uh, you know, these, these are the false towers that we are to be uh, fleeing from not going to those things and sometimes as believers we draw we're drawn to those uh, false towers you know that that we are but that's why we need to continue to be strong in the word strong in our relationship with the lord walk with him daily <clears throat> And walk close to him. So let's now go to the true, what? The true strong tower. What is the true strong tower? Well, it's a person. His name is Jesus. Amen? He's the true strong tower. He's the true strong tower. And, um, you know, here we... Solomon tells us here in these verses that I read here in, in Proverbs 18 again. You know, I, I just love this verse here in 18, um, once again, 18, 10, and 11. And, um, you know, he says that the strong tower there, the Lord is our strong tower. What? In his name. Let me get there. Thank you for bearing with me. And, and um, yes, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. It's in the name of the Lord. You know, and then look, look at number 11 there. A rich man's wealth is a strong uh, city. See, see how that's a, fa a false uh, a strong tower there? The rich man's wealth is a strong city. And he's feeling good about it, right? And then like a, a high wall in his own imagination. People in their, in their thinking could th think that they're fine and they're fine. I don't need God. I don't need and, and their own thinking, their own imagination. They, they feel like they're secure. They feel like they're, they're stable. They're going to be okay. And all of a sudden, destruction, devastation. You know, we, we need to decimate our trust in those false uh, towers and just go to the solution which is what? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because here you find the right architect of a tower. When you think of a tower, you think of a place of refuge, a place that a structure, a place that you could go in there and feel uh, secure, maybe like when the World War uh, II and, and, and I, you know, they had the, the, the bomb shelters and, and people went in there because... They, they felt that, you know, that they were going to be a little more secure. It, it's that kind of a thinking that we are considering this morning. But it's not, uh, it, but if you base your confidence in man, what man builds, you're going to be let down. Whatever man builds, see, always is what? Destroyed. Just like the examples I gave you. Ships. Towers. You name it. Everything will be destroyed. Everything comes down. But what God builds, the right architect, the right foundation, the right materials, the right builder, will what? Will withstand everything. 
withstand everything in your life. Okay, I got it. I got it. And what about the source? You know, wh where does that strength come from? You know, it comes from a name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. That's why I appreciate Brother Joe, our, our worship pastor, because he's always saying, in the name of Jesus. You know, where, when we have the prayer request and we all get prayer requests from Pastor Osvaldo and, and, and you know, uh, he writes there, in the name of Jesus, you know, he has the habit of doing that. That's a good thing. Appreciate that because that's what we're talking about here. It's on the name that you get the spiritual strength. In the name of Jesus. The name was, was, was meaningful for the 2,000 years ago in the time of Christ. And before that, the name had a meaning. It wasn't just, you know, a name and, and that's it. No, it, went, it had a meaning. Just like God's names have meaning. It's not just, God just doesn't have the name God. Did you know that? Oh, I thought it was just God. No. <laughs> Read the Bible. He has many names. For example, you know, well, um, how about this one? Elohim. What does Elohim mean? In the Hebrew name for God. What does it mean? Creator God. Wow, I didn't know that. Elohim. How about El Shaddai? El Shaddai, El Shaddai. Now I'm going to sing a song there that we used to sing way back. Means what? God Almighty. El Shaddai, the Hebrew name for God. You know, use those names when you talk to the Lord sometimes. You, you might, you know, need power in your life. You might need to be reminded of, of something. Uh, lift up those other names of God occasionally when, look them up, Google them. What are all the names of God listed in the Bible? And um, how about Adonai? Adonai means what? Lord. Means Lord. How about Jehovah? You know, the word Jehovah. You know, what, what is that? The name that was unpronounceable and, um, you know, by the Jewish people and uh, that he is what? Lord, you know, this is, uh, he's a foundation. The Lord is a foundation. How about Jehovah Hira? Hira, Jehovah Hira. The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Do you need for the Lord to provide in your life? You're having uh, physical problems. You're having material problems, you're having financial, do you need for the Lord to provide in your needs? We all have needs. Well, remember that name, Jehovah ha Jireh, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. Isn't it beautiful to know that God is there with me in the, in the difficult times, in the trials, in that situation? The Lord is there, Jehovah Shema. How about Jehovah Shalom? You heard the word shalom? Go to Israel. A Jewish person will tell you what? Shalom. What does that mean? That means what? The Lord is our peace. Peace. And this is a beautiful one. <laughs> Jehovah Rafi. The Lord is our healer. The Lord is our healer. <sighs> Lift up that name. Lift up that name. With this Ill illness that I've had, I've, I've gone to him. I've cried to him. Shouted up to him. And it brings comfort. And it brings strength to me when I've done that. You know, but, but our heart, you know, the, the person we should always go to is what? The Lord himself, Jesus. Jesus. His name also means God will help. Did you know that? Did you know that God will help? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, that we could run to you, that we could find refuge to you, that you are our strong tower. Hey, I even looked up my own name, Oscar. <laughs> I Googled that, you know. I was surprised. I go, what? God's fear, Oscar. And I go, wow, really? Me? No. <laughs> and then I, then, uh, Champion, warrior, champion. I go, what? Warrior, champion. That's what the name Oscar means. So, you know, that names have some 
form of meaning. And so what I'm telling you now is to, to you know, go to the name, go to Christ. Go to the Christ. Lift up in the name of Christ. What demons tremble and dr demons flee. The devil flees at the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says also that there is no other name that, that is powerful like the name of the Lord. And I don't know what you are building your life on. I hope, you know, that you are building your life what, upon the rock instead upon the sand. Matthew chapter 7 Verses 24 to 27, Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them. See that? That's always important to act upon God's word. A lot of people when they study these verses here in Matthew 7, 24, 27, don't get that point there. Yes, Jesus is the, fun, you know, the foundation, but what it's talking about here is people who act upon the word of God will be blessed, will be secure, will be will be blessed in their lives. Acts on them may be compared to the wise man who built the house upon the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the house. And yet it did not fall for it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears the words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against the, rock, the house, and it fell, and was it, it, it and was its great fall. Which foundation are you building on, Christ or on the world? You know, that's the question there. I hope it's on Christ. We can go to Christ. You know, here in Philippians chapter 2, you know, uh, verses 9 and on, look what it says. For the, this reason also God highly exalted him. Who did God highly exalted? Christ. And bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Isn't that beautiful? That is tremendous. That's where our faith should be on Jesus. Our faith should be in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And so, um, you know, this, this is what I wanted to share with you this morning. You know, put your faith in the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord, in, in that beautiful name of the Lord. Go to the Lord. Find refuge in him. The thing is about focusing what? On what? Centering on who? On Jesus. Center on him. Center on him. The name has power against Satan. The name is a divine protection for us. And we need, to, we need him all the time. You can find strength. You can have strength. Don't depend on the world. Don't depend on your bank account. Don't depend on your houses. Don't depend on your cars. Don't depend on your jewelry. Don't depend on these things. Depend on what? On the Lord. There is true strength and salvation also. Before you can, you know, have the, the protection and, and safety and security uh, of God, you have to be saved. You don't have it if, if you're not a Christian. You, 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 you're not, you don't have it. The Bible says that all of us were, were dead in our sins. Ephesians 2, you could read that there. All of us. There's not even one person. You know, only Christ was the only true perfect person. But all of humanity, since God created Adam and Eve, that, you know, and, and they sinned, from there on, all of humanity had the disease called what sin. And they were, we were separated from God, away from God, alienated from God, enemies of God. And, and, then Je and Jesus came to die for us on the cross. And through his death, he took my place. He took your place. He brings us together now. God and man.
brings us together. Now we have a relationship with God. We can go to heaven. We have a place secure in heaven. Our names have been written in the book of life. And we can now live freely without fear of dying. We know where we're going. We know where we're going. What's the worst thing that could happen to a Christian if he dies? I know, I hope, he, I hope no, we're all gonna die. Then what's the worst thing that could happen? Me to see the Lord? That's the greatest thing that a Christian could experience. And it's coming to all of us sometime in our life. But right now, I should be what? Gaining my strength for the Lord. So give your heart to the Lord this morning, will you? Give him your heart. Say, how do I do that? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be what? Saved. It's, it's, not, rocket, it's not rocket science, you know, science. You know, if you trust in him, you will be saved. If you believe in who? Jesus, you will be saved. Repent of your sins. Say, yes, I, I, I know I, I'm a sinner. I know I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins to Jesus. Turn it over to him. And you believe in Christ, you trust in him, and now you lean on Jesus, you will be saved forever. Do that now. Do that now if you haven't done that. Right there where you are, do it. You don't have to be in a church. You don't have to be in a, uh, you know, you could do it right now in your heart there. Receive Christ into your life. Don't, don't risk Eternity, losing eternity. There's only two destinations, hell or heaven. That's it. There's no in-between. You either go be with God forever or you're going to be away from God forever. God is going to be a perfect judge. Everybody's going to not have any excuse before God that they never had an opportunity. They will come before God. And then the final thing, the security. You will be protected. Isn't that beautiful? We'll be protected. You know what that word means? That the Hebrew literally means what? To be so high that you are uh, inaccessible. God lifts you up and protects you up. You know that nothing and no one and nothing could touch you if the Lord doesn't allow it. Nothing. That's what you have in Christ. So I want to ask you to stand with me at this time and we're going to close with a prayer and if you have heard the word of God this morning and be believe the Lord has spoken to you you know make that decision to the Lord if you're not a Christian receive Jesus into your life into your heart be saved if you're a believer you know continue to go to what to the true strong tower which is Jesus don't go to the world's uh, strong towers. Those are false. They will never do. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for this beautiful church here, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of preaching your word. A great preacher said that the greatest, most highest, most glorious calling that a man could ever have is to preach the gospel of Christ. I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for allowing me to do that for 40-something years, 46 years, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I wasn't worthy. I wasn't, uh, Lord, but you, you allowed me to do that, and I thank you this day, and I pray, Lord, that you would now allow us to go to you, to be with you, Lord, to flee, to find that strength, security in you, Father, always as believers. Lead us from this place, Lord, with joy, with gladness, and with strength in the name of Jesus. And for your glory, we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Go in peace.